Psalms chapter 128, a song of degree. Blessed means happy. You want to be happy? Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, fear God. Don't fear coronavirus. Don't fear man. Don't feel go fear, fear government. Fear the Lord. He's the one that's able to not only kill the body, but cast the soul into hell, Jesus said. That walk is in his way. So not only fear God, but do what God tells you to do. If you fear the Lord, you're going to do right. If you don't do right, you don't fear the Lord. For thou that fears the Lord, walk is in his way, shall eat the labor of thy hands. You're going to work. You're going to play. You're going to do something. You're going to walk in the ways of the Lord. You're going to earn things from God. Happy, which is blessed, shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Well when you fear the Lord, and well when you walk in the way, and well when you work. Blessed in happiness and well. <clears throat> Thy wife. Now, again, we, we go first one and two. What, what is the blessed man? What is the happy man? What is the well man? In verses three, we look at the wife and children. Verse four, we go back to the the happy, blessed man. Verse 3. A happy man would have a happy family, and a happy family would have a happy husband and father. Listen, don't give me that a happy wife is a happy house. That's not true. That's not true. A happy wife may cause an unhappy husband because he's got, you know, worry about what he's got to buy. Thy wife shall be a fruitful vine. And I'll check what I can think of as a fruitful vine, and there may be others. I think of right away grapes and new wine. By the size of thy house. And you can grow in a vineyard by your house grapes that hang from a vine. If it's grapes, it is fresh grape juice, new wine. It's grapes itself. It's raisins. And notice it says, buy th thy house. She's not in other people's house. She ain't elsewhere. Her home and her I don't know if I can say the word today. Plantation, that might be a bad word, and I don't care. Her roots are in the ground next to her house. That's the virtuous woman. She's not planted elsewhere. By thy house. Whose house? Thy wife. Who? The man that feareth the Lord and the man that walks in the way in the Lord and the man that is happy and the man that labors and is well. If he takes care of the Lord and loves his family, he have no need for a spoil, as the virtuous woman is said of. Thy children. And this goes right along with Psalms 127. That was written for Solomon. And don't tell us who the writers are. I don't know if Psalm 128 was placed right after Psalm 127 because it talks about family. I don't know if, if, if the inspiration of God said, hey, you put those two Psalms together like that. But in the Hebrew, in the Hebrew text Bible, there are no, well, I don't know if there's psalm markings. That I don't know. I don't know if they're marked off. Psalm. Thy children, like olive, olive oil, 
olive the berry. Olive oil is used for cooking and olive oil was used for anointing the priest and the king. But look what it says. You think of olive, you think of tree, it says olive plant. The children are not quite trees yet. They're just sprouting. They're just growing. Round about thy table. They're not at a neighbor's table. They're not at a restaurant table. At thy table. The wife is hanging out and living and, and dwelling by thy house, and your children are dwelling at thy table. New wine and the anointing oil of the Holy Spirit. For the man that is blessed by fearing the Lord and walking in God's ways, eating the labor of his hands, and who is well. And if you got trouble in the family, as, as we looked at Psalm 127, you have missed the principle somewhere of fearing God, walking in his ways, not laboring. It's not well with you. There's something wrong with your wife, and there's something wrong with your children. And the man is in charge of the house. Number one problem, I'll just name a couple and we'll move on. Your wife and your children go to church and you do whatever. That's problem number one. The problem number one. Problem number two is you don't open a Bible and study with your family. You let the pastor and the Sunday school teacher teach your family. You don't have anything to do with your family. That's I'm not in Pacific any order, but this number two I think of. Number three, I have a bowling night. I have a men's night. I have and the night. My wife don't have any nights. My children don't. That could be number three. Number four, wife goes there, husband goes there, children go there. Where are the children? I don't know. It's Wednesday. They're out playing baseball. Where's the wife? I don't know. Some club somewhere. Where's the husband? Working overtime. When is there time for church? We don't, up there's your problem. That's that's just a couple. Of them. Behold, lo and behold, that thus shall the man be blessed. You want to be happy. That feareth the Lord verily, verily. You want to be blessed by God, you got to fear God. And if you're going to fear God, you're going to walk in His way. And you're going to do, you're going to study, you're going to read your Bible, you're going to witness. You don't have to go on the street, you don't have to go door knocking, you're going to do something to tell people about Jesus. You may not have a Sunday school, you may not have a, a Bible study, but you're going to train your family. Rightly, correctly, when you fear the Lord. You're going to tell your children you're not living like other children because that's the way of the world and that's sin. We don't do that in this house. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Speaks of the what? You're not going to wear that. You're going to wear what is proper. You're not going to do that. You're going to do what's proper. You're not going to shoot your mouth off. That's, that's taking charge of the house. Why? Because he fears God. He fears, Lord, I'm going to stand before you. I'm going to give an account for, my, for myself. I'm going to have to give an account for my wife. I'm going to have to give an account for my children. And you will. I think many men forget about that. You and Listen, Jesus said you, got, you will give an account of every idle word. You're the husband. You're in charge of the family. You're going to have to give an account of the wife, the children, and the job. He that laboreth for his hand. The wife shall be as a fruitful vine. The children shall be. You're responsible for that. It's you according to Proverbs. As the correct your children. 
the Lord shall bless. Happy, happy, happy. The out of Zion. Jerusalem. Thou shalt be thou shalt see the good of all Jerusalem all the days of our life. So this is Hebrew. This is Israeli. This is Jewish. But the application can go for the Christian. We can apply Psalm 128, though it's directed to Zion and Jerusalem, Israel. There would be no conflict of the teachings of Jesus and the teachings of Paul and then Peter and James. There's no conflict to say we can nail that one down on a Christian. Why is there destruction in the families? Why is there destruction in the churches? Because the family is destroyed and because the husband and father is destroyed. Yea, thou shalt see thy children's children, grandparents of the grandchildren, and peace upon Israel. That peace upon Israel now takes us to the millennium. And they're going to fear Jesus Christ in the millennium. Because if you don't, you've got a bunch of the bride of Jesus Christ. You've got a bunch of Christians who are reigning over cities. And reigning over the cities are the Christians. And reigning over them are the 12 apostles. And over the 12 apostles, I think, would be the Prince David. And then over David will be Jesus Christ. Somewhere in there we also, the, the Levites, because they were judges. I don't know where they fit in, but they'll be judges. And you have to make it all the way to the Supreme Court, to Jesus Christ, sitting on David's throne and found guilty. And you're going to go jump in the lake because the lake of fire is there. Hell. Down by the Dead Sea. So this goes to an Israel Jewish passage. More looking at the millennium, but there's nothing wrong with this passage before the law. Noah and all the people then. During the law, Samuel and all the people then. The Gospels, all the people around the time of Jesus Christ. The church age, definitely we can run this passage. The tribulation, uh, you better fear the Lord. You're not going to fear the Lord. You're going to take that mark. It's the mark of the, of the devil or fearing Jesus. The mark of the devil will get you food, medical care, a job. The fear of the Lord, you're not going to be too happy on this earth. It'll be death. It'll be starvation. It'll be sicknesses but there's no promise of of those relief and peace on this earth but in the millennium for the jews and then in the millennium if you as a family if you hold to that so this is one of those psalms yeah you can apply that to the church but let's take the main conflict of verse five let's look at the words zion jerusalem Verse 6, Israel. Doctrinally, it's applied to the Jew. I can put spiritual application and do no harm of the teachings of the Pauline epistles. Now, I'm not Paul only, but I can take the book of Proverbs that's coming up soon. I can apply much of the book of Proverbs to Psalms. I mean, to... Uh, writings of Paul in the church age. I can take nine of the, nine of the Ten Commandments and apply it to the church age. Paul does that for us. 